many of the important problems in science and technology and engineering at the moment are at the interface of different fields. Uh, I had always felt that biomedical engineering or the aspects of engineering linking with medicine was a critical aspect of this university and a unique one, a very unique one. And support from the Reynolds Chair allows us to take a longer term view of research and to be able to address problems that we know are going to be very difficult. And in particular in these emerging types of problems like the blood-brain barrier problem. So as an engineer, I like to think in engineering terms. So the blood-brain barrier is effectively the security system for the brain. As a result of eating or exercise, there are relatively large fluctuations in the chemistry in our body, in the bloodstream. And if those fluctuations were translated into the brain, it would be something like spilling a cup of coffee on your computer. It wouldn't be good. So there's two parts to the security system. The endothelial cells are the cells that line the microvessels and capillaries in the brain. And these are highly specialized cells. They're knitted together very tightly so there's no gaps. So small molecules are not able to penetrate between these gaps in the cells. The second way they're specialized is that the cells are designed to actively transport molecules that the brain needs, like oxygen and glucose. But at the same time, we've evolved a system of biological pumps. So these are specialized proteins. And if they recognize molecules that shouldn't be on their way to the brain, they will be pumped right back out into the vascular system. Now this becomes a problem, of course, treating diseases of the brain, because we need to be able to deliver drugs from the vascular system into the brain. So at the moment, there are no drug therapies for a wide range of central nervous system diseases. And these include neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's disease. There's over a million Americans who suffer from Parkinson's disease, as well as Alzheimer's disease, for which over five million Americans suffer. Well, we have I'd say personal reason to be concerned about that. We have a member of the family who is a person who is now in the initial stages. And of course, we can see this happening, this uh, horrible disease. And I realize that there has to be a solution. So advances in tissue engineering, regenerative medicine, in neuroscience now mean that we're poised to be able to address some of these problems. So our ultimate goal is to try to build an artificial brain capillary in the lab. If we can do that, then we have the complete microenvironment that we have in the brain. And we hope that we'll be able to use this to be able to develop strategies to get drugs into the brain, to screen drugs as to whether they'll get efficiently into the brain or not. We're working on a project that's a problem that's never been solved before. The potential impact of our research is so great that it's really exciting. Even though this is also scientifically and also engineering-wise a very interesting problem to want to tackle, uh, the goal of the project is to eventually uh, help people. The potential societal benefit, if we can be successful, is tremendous here. The opportunity to provide for a professorship uh, was something I never really dreamed I'd be able to do. Like you want to keep good people here. You want them not having to be concerned about distractions so they can really concentrate. And it's important to know that there is a benefit to others going out, not just to Professor Searson. The work he's doing and the work of people around him that he's training will help to uh, resolve some of these most difficult uh, problems in medicine that we have today. And that if we can in some small way be a part of helping others, we're very happy to do it.